From InfoCision Stadium on the campus of the University of Akron, welcome to one of the biggest days in college football each year. It's the national signing date as we get set to announce and welcome the newest members of the University of Akron football family. My name is Joe Dunn, also here head football coach Terry Bowden. And coach, uh, I know you're excited about your second group. Maybe you can tell the fans here and across the country how excited you really are. Uh, Joe, we really are excited about this group. Our coach has worked extremely hard in this, what was pretty much our first full year to go out and recruit. Last year, as we came in around January, we had about three and a half weeks to sign a class. This year, we began to work as soon as the signing date was over last year uh, and began to go out uh, during the recruiting periods in the spring, summer, camps, and throughout the fall to identify players, and I think that's what I'm excited about the most in our first really full year of recruiting, uh, to take the number of scholarships that we had available to us, about 15 scholarships available to us, and really take that and, and, and work uh, – our, our numbers around, and we'll actually bring in 25 or 26 new football players this year, including the 15 we're going to talk about today. Uh, as you know, we came in last year. We had several people that were would had had to sit out because they transferred, so they'll be their first year to play. Will be this year coming up. We had three gray shirts from last year that that entered this past January that counted really that y'all heard about when we signed last year, but they were not eligible to play. They gray shirted and came back. Uh, we have. The 15 that we will uh, that we signed today, we'll have several key preferred walk-ons. I can't mention their names because unless they have si- without signing a scholarship, we can't mention their names. But some outstanding local people that are coming in to join us, as well as some players that will join us uh, at the end of the summer. But uh, the key of our class is this this recruiting class, uh, and I am uh, excited ab- about the number that we got. We've got 18 signees. Three came in from junior college. Uh, in January, so three of our players were already in the group. Fifteen signed. Uh, Fifteen will come in in the uh, fall. Of those, th- uh, two more of those were, will be junior college graduates. The rest of those will be at 13 out of the high school level. Uh, so a little note here: nine offensive players, nine defense. I'm not sure we planned it that way, uh, but it worked out pretty much. The, the 18 that are newcomers. Nine offense, nine defense, four offensive linemen, two running backs, two wide receivers, and a quarterback on defense, four linebackers, two defensive line, two cornerbacks, and a safety. The most obviously from Ohio, seven of our recruits are from Ohio, four from Florida, three from Pennsylvania, and one each from Michigan, Illinois, Massachusetts, and Maryland. I think that the, one of the big differences that helps us this year, after a year in the MAC, and you understand the MAC, you also understand not just who the best players are, but who can you sign? Who can you sign? If you watch TV all day, you see nothing but recruiting shows on all day, whether Alabama or, or Florida or, or, or Ohio State or Michigan got the best players. Well, the media doesn't do a real good job. I say the, the recruiting services don't really do a good job of analyzing what we call the mid-major part. And so you have to know what you're doing and know who you're going after and be comfortable. I talked to uh, Jim Trussell again today. He was saying, yeah, well, I didn't get everybody I wanted, but I love everybody I got. <laughs> and that's the way you do it. You love you, you you love what you got. You don't get everybody you want, but you love what you got. And then you demand that they improve. You demand that they uh, be the best they can be. So, again, that's kind of the, uh, the, uh, the rundown of our group. And, again, our coaches and staff really have worked hard. And I think you're going to – I know these players – another comment I made to my coaches, we, if we can't, get the best players, then let's make sure we get players that will make us a better football team. Let's be a better football team, and let's not wait for the panacea, the great player that we may or may not get right now. Let's get players that will help make us a better football team because that's what we got to do first is become a better football team before you become a great football team. And there are some great players in here, and really sometimes we don't even know which ones those are going to be until they develop, Joe. But uh, – uh, but it's it's a it's it's a it's a group we're awful proud of. We're going to be showing a video of all the recruits here in a moment, and then we'll open up for questions to the media and fans that are here with us. But but coach, I would guess uh, looking at the two names that jump out at me, this is kind of a breakthrough year as far as getting some local kids to stay home. Mm-hmm. You got Jerome Lane and Deontay Moore, two Akron City Series kids, and that's got to make you feel pretty good. They really are two linebackers that I'm. Mean, you're talking about six four, two ten. Yeah. These guys both can run. Jerome may be the leading basketball scorer in the county. Uh, just extremely great athletes, uh, very good athletes. We couldn't go anywhere in the country and get more of what we want, which Coach Ahmad is here. Uh, you could talk to him about his position, but he wants players that can run and have range. And these kids, both these players, are about 6'4 
and can do that, uh, and several other co- uh, players locally that are going to be joining us also that, that that I can't mention today because of the fact we're the only ones that we signed today, but uh, we have about five local players coming joining our roster, not counting Stark County, which we think of as pretty local uh, and around, but right here close by that uh, are going to be a great addition to our team. Once again, we'd like to welcome everybody to our special day announcing our uh, recruiting class, Coach Bowden second recruiting class. I think we're ready for the video. We'll have Coach Bowden uh, talk about that. When that's complete, we'll open up for questions from the media and fans. I might have to move so I can see the video. So I can... right. Oh, it's right in front of me. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've done this television stuff before. Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett from Reynoldsburg. 6'4", 200-pound wide receiver. We want big, tall wide. we got two wide receivers that we think are the ultimate level of our that we're looking for, big and fast. And this guy's he was committed to Cincinnati when the coaching staff changed. He committed to Kent and then moved his move, finally changed over and came with us. But you'll see how big he makes him. Look how big he is. There he is turning a kick, but he also – it could be a safety if you if you want to play him at safety. He's a big hitter on safety, but mainly we want a guy that can run, possibly probably an edge player, and stretches the field down the sideline. His high school coach, Buddy White at Reynoldsburg, was my running first running back coach I ever had at Salem College in 1983, and is the head coach there. As you see him right there. The conference is full of big receivers. They, you know, we, we see them all the time. So it's really we've got some great little ones too that we like. But we now, also, see a kid that can play early. You think? Or? Oh, I think I think anybody to receive a running back uh, as opposed to a lineman would have to be one to have to get a shot. That was Cedric. Who was that? Cedric. Brett, oh, this is a junior college lineman. Already in. I think Cedric uh, Brittam Brittam from uh, junior college. You'll have to watch closely. He's a 326, 6'6", 326 pound lineman. He was locked into West Virginia for a while. And they backed off the end. You see the big fella right there going outside. We need to have some linemen. We'll have about five linemen coming in 74 right there. You see him pulling across. He just kind of overwhelms people. A great lineman in this conference. And the, 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 the Ohio is so, is so great lineman in Ohio. And you've got to have good one. He's a big boy. <laughs> but he's... He comes in two years of eligibility out of junior college. He got his A degree. 326 pounds is just a big one. Cedric Brittenham from Chicago area. Uh, went to ASA Junior College in New York. Steven Erickson from Carrollton right down the road south of us. Another freshman lineman. Played defense 6'4", 285. One of our three linemen that played basketball and football. Great athlete. Uh and has great growing potential because these guys are tall, these linemen that we signed. 76, you'll see him playing center right there. Some of y'all that don't. Linemen, you know, that's the, the, the strength of your team is down in those trenches, but it's hard to watch the video sometimes and, and analyze them. We, 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 the great thing about our summer camps, we committed about three linemen out of our summer camps that we had. Valuable to be able to watch them and train them in the summers. Down south, you have spring football, and, and you that's how you evaluate up here. You have... We have to have football camps. We don't have any spring football, so we have to get them to come to our camp so we can evaluate them. Steve Erickson is a 3.9 student, very good student, very good football player, and will be a great addition. 6'4", with all of our line, we like around 6'4", 6'5", because they can grow. You'd like to redshirt many of them. <coughs> LeVon Goth- Gothney from Dreynelsburg. He's a shorter guy, but he's a defensive lineman. You'll watch him as burst through the line screen. We look for quick acceleration and first step. We needed depth on our defensive line. We picked up two. He's at Hargrove Military Academy. He came out last year. We watched him, but he had to go to Hargrove and uh, went to Hargrove and signed with us. But the, if you can keep your eye on the dotted line or the circle they make, he really has great explosion off the ball. We have some good starters coming back on these lab. We have no depth. we got to have people that can come play with Grice and with Capone and that group. LeVon Gothney from Reynoldsburg High School, Hargrove Military. Reynoldsburg right outside of, um, of Columbus. Zach Geyser, safety. You'll see him back there at back, a safety, making the interception. Great leader, great instinctive player. He likes to play center field, uh, great uh, center fielder type position, smart, uh, out of Pittsburgh area. And um, we liked him. He committed early to us. Coach Woodford does a great job over there. He's blitzing on the quarterback for right now. But 
Very smart football player. He'll find ways to help you. Blocks a kick there. Sacked the quarterback earlier. <coughs> and we'll strike you. <coughs> Interception right there. Zach Guys from Fayette, Fayette City, Greenberg Central Catholic. Mikey Hayes from West Point High School in Ocala, Florida. Mikey's a, he's we got him as a cornerback and a great athlete. Plus, I mean, you probably see more video of him as a running back, a wide out, a punt return, kick return. But you're, in high school, your best athletes quite often play everything. But he has the ability. He run, he's run a 10-400 meters. Um, several of our coaches, Coach Amata, his coach in high school, coach with Coach Amata and Coach Stroud. So we had good contacts down there. When you're going down to Cal and trying to get a player, you got to have somebody that's in your corner a little bit. And what you've got here is is, uh, uh, is an athlete, and maybe he could be a punter. Kick. We have a lot, bunch of people coming to be punt and kick return. We did not have any very many kick return guys on our team. I used to ask who wants to be a kick return, and nobody would raise their hand. So it was not a good thing last year. <laughs> we finally got some guys that want to be kick return guys, and and cornerbacks quite often are your best athletes. <coughs> Mikey Hayes from Ocala. Keontae Hollis, I had his brother. He's a defensive lineman from junior college, Iowa City Junior College. He's out of uh, Pontiac, Michigan, where he lived. His brother played for me at North Alabama. He's in Canadian football. Uh, this guy's got a fast motor, too. Lineman, if you think of Woolfork, some of these guys don't have the prettiest body in the world. You know, <laughs> They're not like the 6'5 line, but they shorter, can accelerate, and play football. I think of uh, Woolfork. I think of yeah. Warren Sapp. Some of these guys here might look a little on the pudgy side. But they play. He plays real, accelerates, and plays fast. Even dropped into coverage that time. Keontae out of Iowa Central Community College. C.J. James, we wanted you to see him because he set out. He was on the team last year as a transfer out of Colorado. This is his Colorado State film. He started for Coach Trout at Colorado State, transferred, so set out. You hadn't had a chance to see him play. 245-pound defensive end that has his great sack skills, sacking skills. We just got some of his college film from playing in the Mountain West Conference. He comes in with one more year of eligibility, but he's been on our team now and worked out with our scout squad this past year. And one of those guys that will not go on the list tomorrow as a signee, but he'll be one of our newcomers that we want to wanted y'all to have a chance to see that we think is um, going to be a good player for us. Again, he was one of Coach Stroud's defensive linemen uh, at Colorado State last year. He's out of Orlando, Florida, and uh, uh, out of, I think, Dr. Phillips High School or Colonial High School. Brentwood, t Brentwood, uh, not Tennessee, Brentwood, Pittsburgh. This is Kish, Michael Kish from Brentwood High School in Pittsburgh. He's a lineman. He plays nothing but tight end. Quite often you'll see a guy that's 6'5", 260, and you know he's going to grow into a lineman. This is great basketball player, outstanding tight end, but we're projecting him as an offensive tackle. Great feet, athleticism. And when you start to build your program and develop, it starts with developing your linemen, and they quite often need to be developed. And we've got to we've, we've got to plan linemen that way. We might pick up a junior college guy like I mentioned about the first one, but you want most of them you'll be out of high school to be a four and five year member of your program. And he's going to have great as a tackle. As you see, he still blocks well as a defense as an offensive tight end. And then when you want to use a big tight end, those guys, even though they have the wrong numbers, they can play tight end. Sure. They're blocking tight end for you, too. Ryan Quartercrax, uh, he is another lineman we brought in from uh, Wayne Trace over on the western side of our state. Oh, thank you, Kim. And uh, another guy that got, plays basketball, good athlete, got good, the right proper height. And, uh, you know, we came and we had about seven linemen on scholarship we couldn't hardly get through. So we'll see. I, I think we have a total of five, three high school 
to JC coming in. As long as they're six four or five, we don't mind them being about two seventy. But they play. You're playing football at about three hundred pounds or plus, uh, even in the, the middle mid, mid level of Division One or BCS level. It's just three hundred across the board, and, and you got to be tall enough to handle that. I say he plays a little defense too, which is not bad. They could kill that quarterback. <laughs> Golly. <clears throat> Quarter crack. I've never heard of a name like that. That was a great high school uh, basketball. Oh, is that right? Good family. Good family. <coughs> Jerome Lane, this is what we talked about. Firestone, this guy's a player now. Uh, and he, he's most of his films on we, – we probably have some odd defense film. He's a running back, just like Cody Grice, but he's a he's – a, heck, he looks a lot more like a running back than Cody does. <laughs> Cody was a heck of a running back. I don't get me wrong, but he was always a lineman playing running back, I think. This was an athlete here, and Jerome is a – I think I watched, he played, scored 37 points the other night in basketball. But he just can move. You can see him move, and it excites you to have an outside linebacker body like that. 6'4", skinny because he's playing basketball. His dad was a first-round NBA pick out of Firestone years ago. I think it was out of Firestone years ago, several years ago. Anthony Laurel, so some of y'all may know the program well. If you remember Tony Laurel, who played here as a fullback back in the early 80s. Yeah. In fact, he was here with Coach yeah, Dennis from Norton, Norton High School. From Norton, and he pl played when my first year here with Coach Faust. I coached him with his sons at Manatee High School, and he tore his knee up this year, and a lot of people backed off, but we signed him. He'll actually come as a gray shirt because his knee, give it time to repair. Uh, we were able to get him. He's an all-around utility player, very much like Connor Hundley, but uh, probably a little bit smaller and faster. But you'll see he does a lot of things, cuts good bloodlines. Was glad to be here, but he's going to actually come in January, which would be like a red shirt, but we call that a gray shirt. And his numbers won't count against us years here, although we signed him. And uh, sometimes that knee injury, which should heal fine, but it, it knocks off some of the bigger schools. He played at the highest level in Florida. At the, Manatee is as yeah. good as it gets in Florida. Bradenton Manatee High School. Kind of a slot receiver and a running back and an athlete. Kevin Mills from, from Canton McKinley. He, he was one of our gray shirts. We came in January. He's already in school. He's 310 pounds, 6'4", 310. And we really like him. So he'll be actually a, a freshman. He, although he comes in January, he could actually redshirt or play this year. Didn't have as hard as hard to get good film that you can watch on offensive linemen. We have to study a lot. C.J. Mizell uh, is an interesting, maybe one of the best. Probably the if there's a franchise guy that that he has to graduate from junior college this summer. But we he originally was signed with Florida State and Coach Amaz from Tallahassee. Ended up going to Washington State, but he is a six about 235, 240 pounds, six two linebacker that can he, he's he's what they're supposed to look like. Now he's got he's got to finish up his J. We'll sign him. He has to finish up his junior college grades. We expect him to do that, but it won't be like a, it's not going to be a cakewalk. But he's got a we have a, he has a plan, and he's in Tallahassee going to Tallahassee Community College. I got friends down that town. <laughs> <laughs> but he is a but he would be, he is a, a big physical linebacker. You know Brian Wagner was a heck of a line. We lost him, didn't have him last year, and you, we had some good ones that came out. But you you need somebody to step in and. Uh, with some size there. Washington State, where he went to Tallahassee Community College, where he's right. Dante Moore from Kenmore. Here's that linebacker from Kenmore that's about this. He's not quite as tall as Jerome Lane, but looks very much like when you put them side by side, they look a lot alike. And uh, this this fellow is really good. He, he, we really are excited to have him. And uh, first time I've been to Kenmore High School in a long time, they're losing the students over there. I don't know, it didn't look like a little smaller over there. But, it's, uh, but he's a heck of a player. And uh, does a great job, and uh, just get, and um, like I say, that's the, it's the kind of abilities, running wise and height wise, that you're looking for. I think we've got some thumbnail sketches that we had to hand out that have maybe have some more on their bios. 
what call conference or all league or all this or that. A nice hit there. Deontay Moore, 6'4", 205 pounds. Emmanuel Morgan, here's a running back out of Naples, 5'9", 190, probably 5'8", to be honest with you, but I like him short if they're going to be. He has a strong, strong uh, uh, legs, cannot be brought down, rushed for over 2,000 yards. Don't get recruited quite as much in Naples as you do over in Fort Lauderdale area. Just the West Coast is where people go. Naples, is th- they think of that as a retirement area, but there are some great football over there. And he, he had a great state playoffs, and he's almost impossible to bring down. And, and, and like I said, we've got three really good backs, but you need one. One needs to just step out. Everybody's got one, that just, uh, and you keep wanting to find him. And really loved – I loved his video. It, it um, came down to us in New Mexico, believe it or not. He liked snow better than he liked desert. <laughs> <laughs> Tough choice to think about when you think about it, but he liked snow better than desert. <laughs> Powerful young man, hard to tackle. Yeah, if you look at running backs and pros, you're always seeing he's 5'9", 220. You see that's there's no place to tackle him. And that, not that he's the, the NFL guy, but that's the body type that people are wanting to see at the running back position now. That 5'9", 5, 5, even 5'8", 5, 5, and 205, 210, that you just the hips are big, the legs are big, and the shoulder pads are low, and you can't find a place to tackle him. John Shelby is here. He was a junior college linebacker. He came in and joined us already. He just came in January. Really can run. He signed with Kansas out of high school, went to a junior college. Now became eligible. A couple of guys came in early. They, the, the junior college they could actually graduated them about a week in January. We were able to get them because our school started a little bit later. They would have gone maybe to a, even a BCS school, but they could, they had to go to school earlier there. So we were able to hold off and let them graduate with their AA degree, and uh, it really saved us on this linebacker here. He's he, he, again, he's not as big as Jerome and, and Deontay at six four, but he's about six one two ten and can can run and really play fast. Nassau Community College, good junior college. Uh, Josh Smith was one of our gray shirts that we signed last year. He held back, stayed out, cornerback. You won't see real good video here, but he had most of his accolades were wide receiver and running back, but a great athlete, got a good size, 6'2", 185, cornerback. He, he, he joined us in January, so he's just been here a couple of weeks, and uh, he'll be a true freshman next year. Out of uh, Western Hills High School in Cincinnati area. Good speed. Jason Stars, another one of our gray shirts. We had three or four of them from last year. Again, he came in January, about 6'3, 225. Outside linebacker, more like a defensive end. Great growth potential. And great uh, potential as a player. Just got the right, the right frame to grow. i got to win enough games to keep me around here to let these kids grow up and be great players. That's, what we're, 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 that's the plan. The plan is the long term for a lot of these guys. He's a good, good young man. In fact, he paid his own way in January. He took less than 12 hours, which makes him just a true freshman again under the rules, the NCAA rules. Jason Starge from Walnut Hills in Cincinnati, Ohio. Dante Williams, the cornerback, came in January. He's on, those, he's on the team already also. When they talk about the 15 new ones coming, these are the guys that are already there. He's an outstanding cornerback. We were looking for that big one like uh, K, uh, Avis Comac. They're, they're hard to find. We, we didn't get the big, big cornerback. We got some extremely athletic ones that we, we know can play. We'll always look for the bigger cornerback, but you've you got to find a football player. You take him. Here he is blocking a kick. Great personality. He's one of those guys that when he comes in, you know he's going to be a great addition to the team because of his positive, his upbeat personality, likable.
Dante from ASA Community College in Brooklyn. Turned to one of the turning into one of the top ones. Austin Wolf. We're thrilled to get in Austin Wolf. He had committed early to Cincinnati. He was in our football camp, our one day camp. We timed him in a four four three to four four five. Our, our coaches timed him six four two hundred pounds, and we were all, we wanted him from day one. He, this guy we felt being at eleven would be a sleeper. Cincinnati's old staff liked him, took him. The new staff backed off, had other people in mind, and this guy, like Michael Bennett from Reynoldsburg, are two six four two hundred pound receivers that can run, and he's got great hands too. Not as big as Chris Pratt, but uh, faster even. Pratt's pretty fast. Austin Wolf got six boys in that family. He's one of the five younger ones, so maybe there'll be some more recruits. <laughs> this is the quarterback, Thomas Woodson, out of Pittsburgh Gateway High School. Great thrower and can move the football. We want our quarterbacks to be maybe a little more a little more mobile this year, maybe run for some first downs, but this guy can throw it. He was committed to Arizona, Rich Rodriguez, for about six months, and Rich ended up taking another guy in Arizona and backing off, and we were able to get him to commit to us a week or two later. He liked our offensive style and uh, will create great competition. Can sling the football as far as you need to throw it, but he's very agile. He's about 6'1", 6'2", 230 already. He's got thick, thick uh, lower body. Looked like a linebacker if you saw him. And uh, But he's got great athleticism and, and understands how to sit in a shotgun and throw the football. And if he has to run it, he can run it. If you remember, Kyle Pohl came in late last year and, and was able to move, run for some first down. I think you got to have guys that uh, do that. Don't he's got legs like Jordan Lynch. Yeah, he's exactly. He's exactly. That's what reminds you of. Except this, you know, I, I would say he probably throws a lot more than Jordan. Yeah. Jordan's more the runner that can throw. He's a thrower, and we're always going to want a thrower that can run, and uh, enough to keep our offense um, uh, a little bit uh, diverse and keep keep them on their toes. But. Uh, it's a good group. Like I say, we don't always get everybody we want, but we love everybody we get. And uh, you, you learn to get excited about the guys. And if you got the right attitude and the right uh, uh, mentality, they'll, they'll, they'll help you get better. So a good group of guys. And like I said, when it's all said and done, we'll actually have 26 to 28 people on our roster that were not eligible to play last year from all the different ways they came as gray shirts, early chance, junior college, uh, preferred walk-ons the next few weeks that we, that we know about. And then uh, even guys that uh, are coming in uh, at the end of the summer uh, um, as transfers. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a good addition to our football team. Okay, we're going to open up for questions from the media and the fans. We have uh, Greg Bach over here to uh, your right, and uh, got another microphone over here. So just raise your hand if you'd like uh, to ask a question, and I'll kind of start it off. Uh, Coach, it seemed like the staff really closed uh, on these last week or two, coming up with uh, really good kids. And, and I think that's probably the, the way it's got to be because, it, it, like I said, I keep saying our level, but you know there's a, there's a BCS level where they get the guys they want. And a lot of guys are going to hold out. Yeah. You know, uh, They're going to hold out hoping they get, a, uh, they get a call. Or they've got somebody saying, well, we want you, but we still got two other guys we've got to see. And so you've got, if you're going to get those type of players, you got to wait. Now, I'm not so sure we couldn't wait even longer. I mean, we, our coaches debated at four, four or five open to the last day. Uh, it's just scary yeah. to do that. But you could probably make, if you've got good contacts like our staff does, with good contacts, you would, you'd be able to get good players too. But uh, I think it's important and I, at, at, at Akron that you hang to the end and keep a few available so you get the very best players uh, that you can get. Okay, we'll open up for questions. George? Hey, Terry, what's it say to you that in your second year you can come in and get local players like right. Deontay Moore, who's who's who was well-regarded? reasonably recruited, and a Jerome Lane who has been tearing it up on, on the right. basketball court and yeah. is switching to football now. Two things. One, I think our players sell really good. If the players did not believe in the direction of the program or they were having bad experience, uh, they, would, they wouldn't lie. We're behind our back when those players go out on a, on a visit and they go and talk and visit. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to pretend that they enjoyed it or they felt strongly about it. So I think the players uh, – were, were instrumental in believing in the future of this program and and, uh, and, and where it's going. And uh, and I think, took we've talked about this as a staff meeting. I mean, as much as we wish we could have won more games and we coaches could have made a bigger impact, uh, the fact is we got an attitude change. We still have, we don't have a lot of wins the last three years. 
the school's commitment to these facilities is the difference maker right now until we start winning ball games and more games and, and that happening and kids ultimately they want to go where they can win and, and, and play for championships but without a doubt the commitment this university has made there's not a, there's several players that would have gone to other max schools they came into our indoor facility and our and our stadium and saw the commitment it just they, they left just just wide eyed and so players and the way the players sold our program uh, and then the, the commitment the university has made that's what that's what is going to carry us to the next level. Okay, if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll make sure we get a microphone in front of you. Coach, it sounded like you had a good recruiting uh, group, and I was wondering with the new additions to the uh, Zip family, what do you think next year? We've got uh, got a tough schedule, got a tough conference. What do you think as far as wins and losses? Uh, what are you looking at? Well, you know, I mean, obviously, we, we want to see, you know, the improvement that you hear so much about from year one to year two, where you where you where you you, you make the strides that you'd like to make. So, uh, uh, and you'd like to see us. I, I don't. I wouldn't have put one as my, the as my guest for last year, uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to say. I don't want to underestimate. I probably would be the same. Where I, I want to go bowling. I want to go bowling. This probably we we play ten teams that are in, that, that were in bowls this year. Ten of our twelve teams that we play, the, the MAC conference right now is such that once you get good enough to win, you're going to a bowl. I mean, it's it, that because that's where everybody, the, the, that's where almost everybody is. And so, um, no, but I, but I expect us to get better. I, I don't know that I can put wins on it, but I know where we're going, uh, and I think we know how we're going to get there. But uh, the, we're, we're experiencing, and I, and, I, and I don't make excuses. I just believe right now the league is at its best uh, from top to bottom. Uh, and then, of course, our non-conference team, Central Florida, was probably next to Ohio State was the best team on our team, and they they, they won their second bowl. Uh, Louisiana Lafayette replaces FIU, and they've gone nine and three two years in a row. Uh, that, and that's the coach I replaced at North Alabama, Mark Hudspeth. Coach Coach AJ Mill, we played for him, and Coach Tank Edwards, I coached for him. But they've been to bowls and won two bowls the last two times. And of course, uh, um, Michigan, not a bad little team there either. Uh, that we play, and then we then we then we lose Morgan State for James Madison, and so that was a that's a pretty good one double A. But uh, uh, we're going to be a better football team, and we get we've got better every every day. We're going to be a better football team, but we're not going to be happy until we, first thing is is winning season going to a bowl. Now again, we've only gone to one bowl in our 25 years at Division One football, uh, and uh, and it hasn't been easy. But that's our first goal. Then the second one is to compete for the conference championship. Thank you, Coach. <clears throat> Uh, Coach, um, interested in a guy like uh, the Michael Kish that we saw there. Uh-huh. Uh, is that a kind of guy? I mean, when you look at him, did you did they think? Did you think tackle or offensive line right from the beginning, or how does that process play out? Yeah, Mike Woodford was on him first. He took, I think, he took Coach Harrington over to uh, to see him. But I, I think it's offensive lineman. I mean, if we were a big Iowa type team that played a bunch of big tight ends like they do, uh, you might say we want some 280 pound tight ends. But I think when you see a guy that big and is kind of a physical player with his kind of talent, if you if you look at how the how teams are developing great tackles, they're finding tight ends with feet, with athleticism that have large bodies, and uh, and have a chance to put on weight. And so if you put on 15 pounds a year to a 200 six foot six or six five 260 pounder, 10 to 15 pounds a year, you're talking about a 310 pound lineman. So right off the bat, we saw him as a uh, a lineman. But you got to, if you look at almost any team that, that nowadays the people playing multiple offensive sets, they're using four wide receivers, three wide receivers, three backs in the backfield. Quite often you don't have enough tight ends if you're if you have too many of the other, and all of a sudden you're taking your tackles. And you don't care if they don't, they know they can't go off a pass, but you're finding your best tackles on the end, put them on the end, just block them. You know, put your tight end on the short side without a without a tackle over there, and put your tight end on the other side. And so those kind of things. Now, when you have a tight end that's going to move to tackle, he can kind of handle both those. But I think we we fell all out the bat. Uh, he was one of the three freshmen that we came in that we thought because we got a junior college guy, uh, Brittenham, Brittenham, uh 326. We've got uh, the big uh, the big Mills boy from Ken McKinley who will be a, coming in and three freshmen coming in. And we've got another guy we can't talk about. We have another guy we've got hopefully transferring in that would graduate. And be eligible for a couple of years after graduation from a big school that we're looking at right now, and I don't. I think I can get by with saying that that, that vaguely, because uh, I'm not allowed to mention names of guys we don't recruit. Coach, at the end of the uh, season, after I interviewed you in the, at the after the Toledo game, uh, you compared the Mid American Conference very favorably to a lot of the 
mid-level conferences around uh, the country. Was it? Did that really tell you what type of player you needed to win at, the, at this level? I mean, I think I think over the years when you play a, a, a couple of mid, and I coached at Auburn against yeah. Western uh, Western uh, uh, Michigan um, and another and one other team, and when I was at Auburn, you knew they had good teams. But I think till you get in, and you see the yeah. level of kids that are playing in the pros, the quality of people in the trenches, the quality of the quarterback play. Yeah. Uh, and the ability, uh, and when you watch him play head to head with Conference USA, I'll, I'll, you know most of the Big East was a notch above, but Rutgers lost to um, uh, Kent, yeah. and uh, Cincinnati lost to Toledo, and you know Penn State lost to Ohio, and Iowa lost to uh, Central Michigan. It uh, the quality across the board is is even better than we thought, and uh, I think you'd have to say, I mean, uh, Conference USA and, and the Mountain West, a lot of these teams are, and, and even the South Belt. I think mm-hmm. if you, most of our teams. Fair better than win more yeah. than we lose against South Belt in the in the bowl sure. game. So it's a uh, it's a MAC is a very unique conference. There are certain things that make it unique and that they maintain a level the the, the stadium you know the attendance and everybody's a little they all maintain the same type of budgets the same type of, but the level there's the reputation since 1946 so strong the reputation for being uh, uh, King be, uh, be, beating Big Ten teams every year and having a reputation for winning yeah. big games as a as the level of athleticism. And I think the South, because of the SEC, has gotten all the recognition for the athletes that, that are winning. But I think if you look at the conference and look at the quality of players that we're seeing in Ohio and western Pennsylvania, uh, it's it's as good as anywhere in the country. We'll take some more questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, general recruiting question. I know they changed the rules this year as far as recruiting for the next few years as far as unlimited communication. All right, all right. How does that affect you and how does that well, you know, I think it's going to help us. I, the only reason I, th- I think the poor BC, the top 10 programs in America, top 20, where those guys are up against the top guys, those guys will never be off the phone. They'll they'll be texting all <laughs> night long because they you're not going to win if you're just you're, yeah. you just mad you get a text and you're afraid not to answer it. You get a text from a player at two o'clock in the morning. Now you got to answer it right now, and if you don't, some other school's going to answer it. And so I think it's going to tie up a lot of coaches at some of the levels and 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 give us a chance to to get into a. To some players, as even more players, I, I'm, you know, I'm, on one hand, I, I tend to worry about when you open things up because coaches tend to abuse it, you know. But on the other hand, you get nitpicky on little things, and we miss the, you know, the forest for the trees with some of the little things that we do. But I, I I've never understood why texting was a problem. It'd be like when they first invented cell phones to say you can't use them because the only proper way to call is on our line, you know. That's the way we used to think. And then now it's almost like, well, kid, now kids don't call self. They don't even have a cell service. They have texting service. Their parents don't want to talk to you. They want to text. There's a, <laughs> we live in a society where a ton of people, that's all they, they want to answer you when they want to with a text. They don't want to be, and I don't know why that's any different from the telegraph to the telephone to the cell phone to the, but somehow we call that different. To me, I think we should have, and I don't know if we will, we should never allow us to communicate with the players during school. They should eliminate. They, and there's no rule right. They shouldn't even be before five o'clock or four o'clock. You shouldn't be able to text or call anybody because that's school time. They probably should have their tea, their phones in their in their duffel bag or whatever. Uh, but it is going to. It's they opened up a lot of the rules to make it wide open. So you know. maybe some of the fans don't realize what happened, Coach. Maybe you can explain. Was it August first? Unlimited texting. Is that the new rule? Starting rate? August first, unlimited texting and some uh, the. Mail outs are big, are open again. But catalogs are again. All, you know. I think the the, the NCAA top is saying, hey, the rich are. Let's don't. We can't make it with the level playing fields about as level as we can get it. Is numbers. We can't make one rich school more like a school that's not as rich. So they've worked hard to have it. So they're going to open it up a little bit. So, you know, like I said, I don't know that the MAC conference does a great job, and it can be criticized or not for creating a situation where there's much parity. And parity. Yeah, we may have well, our, our non-conference is tougher sometimes than our conference, but there's a it's a league that understands the necessity of parity, and uh, and it sure seems to work over over the years in the MAC conference. Coach, with the offense you run, uh, you're always going to have to bring in quality wide receivers. Is that is that a plus uh, going after the wideouts? Because you know you're going to need four or five of them spread across I mean, the field. Well, anytime you pl- if you start if you play four wideouts, you probably better you better be throwing it 80 yeah. percent of the time because you you're taking all your blockers out of the game, and you got your catches. If you got three wideouts, you're probably 70 percent of the time, uh, and so you better have good wideouts. Now we've been you know we we've been a lot of four wideouts, but as we sign these linemen, we'd like to get to two back, three wide out, and run the ball more effectively. Uh, and of course, AJ Milway over here is we've named JJ as our offensive coordinator, and he'll uh, kind of put a lot of stuff together. I like to keep my nose in it, 
defensive coordinators love it much more than offensive guys because I bother offensive guys and don't bother the defensive guys as much because I like to know, get nosy. But but um, the receivers are key. If you're going to be a team that plays three or four wide receivers, if you can't throw and yeah. catch it, we throw it more than anybody last year. We just didn't yeah. catch it more than anybody. You know, we didn't, we I think we led, we might have led the nation in, in attempts. We didn't lead the nation in completions. What that means, you're throwing it too much. You you're, you're probably ought to be running it. We're we're running it some, so you're not having to throw it when they know you're going to throw it. But the, the, I can't say enough about the receivers that uh, I'm really excited about. Well, yeah. we have 11 out of 12 receivers back right. in scholarship. So three of those will graduate, but uh, we've got uh, uh, the two big 6'4 receivers that I think that have speed, and I believe they can play. I think that as they develop, I think they'll be guys that can play at any level uh, of college football Division One. And then we have a couple that we haven't announced yet that we're talking to that are right. little Scatter bug, little bit, little bitty water bugs that can flat play the inside too. You've seen a few of those. We've got a few, and, we, and we've got a couple that we that we're working to bring in as well, that can be those inside slot guys. Okay, right up here in front, or up here in front first, then we'll go in the back. Hey, coach, coach, what do you uh, what do you uh, plan to do to uh, improve the special teams? Better p- p- personnel. It's the first thing that looks bad when you don't have depth. Now you don't have anybody to put on special teams. And then when your first teamers get exhausted and the first thing they have to do is come out the kickoff return team or kickoff. So the worst thing for your special teams is not have depth because you've got to play outstanding talent on the team. And when you don't have a bunch of line, because linebacker sizes are what you want to play. They run, they, they won, they're big enough to block. They're, they're, they're big enough to handle the, 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 the hits, but they're also fast enough. They learn to tackle. So we don't have, we have not had enough personnel to be good in specialty teams, or it's, it's lacking. You know, we had a freshman kicker, a freshman punter, and a bunch of freshmen playing. And like I said, there were there was half our season I could not get a guy to volunteer to be a kick returner. We had no. It was. I felt sorry to, for for our, our team because we didn't have the type of guys that you know we wanted. Well, some of our running backs you think would be good, but that wasn't their thing. You know, and uh, um, so the biggest thing we can do to help our special teams, and we now, Jeff, my brother Jeff is in charge. He's got the other coaches to work every one of them. We're going to go look at everything to say make sure no stones unturned. But I think all of us have coached long enough to know says you got to get better people on your special teams, and then have a guy. I mean, there's a reason. I mean, I mean, I hate to, I hate to use Kent State, the guy, the number one had three kickoff returns before everybody else figured out how good he was. You know, probably helped win one or two games. But we got to have a guy that catches the ball. Uh, and a guy that can kick it and a guy that can punt it, but we have to have a lot of better athletes that we're putting on specialty teams, you know, uh, because that's the game's been played like that a long time. You don't, you can't have a, a you, you can't all have a, a special teams full of the walk-ons and give them a chance to play. You have a couple that earn it, but you got to play players. So that's got to come through putting better people on there and having some, and then having some naturals returning the ball that you can't coach. Okay, a question back here. Yes, sir. I have a question and a statement. Uh-huh. The statement is, that's like they introduced those athletes who made the Dean's list. And I want to compliment the football program. They had a good representation on the Dean's list. We had 39, I think. And I, we had a lot of classes last night, and there weren't as many. We had, a, I mean, the entire athletic part in said that we were well, so... The pro- question, the question okay. is... Because the players that uh, that were on last year's team, do they still maintain a winning attitude to the, the academic side of it uh, as well as the ath- I think that uh, the academic standards that, that that are here were set before I got. I think we've we've tried to make a commitment with Ann and her staff to stay with our plan of of a great support system and monitoring and, and evaluating and, and helping our players direct them toward their areas where they have the best expertise, the better better abilities. And, uh, and uh, so we have a very, a, a, a very good um, uh, team academic uh, average number of players that are on the honor roll, uh, very high. Um, and, um, and so I think the course is set there, you know. Uh, people are tend to want you to say, "Well, we need a little, we need a few more, few more ornery guys that don't like school, so we better." But I don't believe that has to be the case. Bill Parcells had a big note on the back of his wall behind his desk that said, "You win football games with smart football players," and I think that's the most important thing. Uh, but every now and then you'll get some ornery guys that that you have to push them, you know, push them more than pull them, and uh, or pull them more than push them, or however the saying goes. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, we feel very good. The commitment's still there, and. Uh, 
And when we sign players, we, we, we met last week, and we, we don't publicly talk about it. We'll talk about Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, where we better keep our eyes open on certain players. But they do a great job. If they do their part, we know they come here with the attempt to graduate. So we, we do a great job right off the bat of trying to figure out where they are from the very beginning and then get them moving. And my personal uh, uh, mandate, I think, to the players is that I, you, I, I will not be comfortable until you, you take ownership of your own degree. When it becomes your degree and your class schedule and your registration, then, then I got it. When, it. when it's me having to make you go register and me having to have somebody pick out your major and me having to go out there and run you if you don't go to class, well, we're going to have trouble. But when those players can, can take ownership and say, hey, it's your future, it's your degree, and football is going to be over, you know, uh, um, and that's when they have it. And we, and we, we harp on that every day. And uh, we've got a, good, we've got a good, good system here. I think we, uh, we, do, we do a good job of uh, uh, pushing our players. <coughs> Anything else? Before we get everybody, yes, sir, back there. Hey, coach. You yes. Know, you know, having just you know one win this season, sometimes it's hard to keep the keep the team. Towards the end of the season, at the last game, you know, how did it go with yeah. keeping the team there with you, motivated, and looking forward to the next season, or even now you're waiting for right. the program. You know, it was tough. It's not, and, and and believe me, for the, some of these that, that wonder how tough it's hard, toughest year I've ever been through in my life. I've never had one win. I've never not seen at a game. Maybe I pick up a couple at the end, but the, it, it's but our kids played as good as they could play. And then when we asked them to keep responding, they kept responding. After Toledo, there were many drives in the in the in the dressing room after the Toledo game when they should have been conditioned to not worry about it. It was a uh, uh, and, and several of, and then I think the biggest thing for those of you who got to come to the senior banquet when we we honored our seniors and a list of those players. Our seniors left here feeling like they had set the course, that they had made the positive move for this program that was going to set the future of our program. One more game. They didn't win, didn't win one more game, but every game they had a chance to win. And I think to, a, to, a, to every one of our seniors walked away from this school having what we, we owe, owe them, a great experience, and the feeling like they there's going to be success down the road, and it started with them. And so, you know, we coached. It's very humbling. Very, My pride was hurt. It, it just made me sick. But but also, you somewhere along the line, um, you, you keep believing and you keep keep moving. You know, I, you know our our slogan was believe last year, and we did. I think the kids believed in themselves. They played like that, and I um, uh, I have not hit it. The the, the 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 slogan this year is going to be commitment. Now that we believe, now let's see if we can make even a greater commitment to that belief that that we are good enough to win. So I'll be honest with you. Like I say, if you ask anybody, any on the team, and the from our from our senior banquet with all of our team was there. It was as positive, uh, I mean, real positive of, of, of an experience as you could have about players. Like I say, they did not walk away and say, oh, well, we never got it done. We never said, man, we got it started. You guys finish it. We, we, we got us playing hard every game, taking every game to the wire. Now y'all finish it. And so it was positive. So um, um, it's a uh, it's, – uh, and I've got a great mature staff who's not happy with where we, we come here to win football game. We come here to build a football program and – and uh, I got some coaches that, that know how, they've been a part of a lot of winning programs, and uh, it's unfinished business. It's unfinished business, and so uh, there is an even greater commitment. Okay, we'd like to thank everybody who's been watching on the internet, uh, all the fans here today for uh, coming to our press conference. It's an exciting time with the new recruits coming in. Thanks again, and uh, spring football will be here before you know it. Thanks again for coming. Thank you. <laughs>